Bună tardă! <laughs> Okay. Today I'd like to talk about how can we extend all of our five senses into the world using computers and augmented reality. I think we should become like the samurai who perceive the world with all their five senses and some could even fight blindly. Now tacit knowledge is critical in the 21st century, the age of creativity. But tacit knowledge is gained from experience. And we limit our experience if we mainly communicate with audio vision and with glass that we see with today's information technology. And for effective learning, we need to excite all parts of our brain with all of the senses. And related science has also shown that nonverbal communication is very powerful. In fact, it's been shown that more than 60% of human communication is nonverbal. So I believe that in the future, the future of internet, we'll move from the age of information that we're in now, where we can share information, to the age of experience communication, where we can communicate with all of our senses. So for example, now we can easily find through internet, uh, you know, my location in Barcelona, and it's a sunny day, but in the future, we'll be able to share what does it feel like to be in this building and even what is the taste and smell of the dinner that we'll have tonight. So I'll talk a little about some of this work that I've been doing on multi-sensory communication, and I'll start off with vision. A few years ago, I became very interested in how could we merge the virtual reality world, which is behind the screen, with the physical world that we live in. And so this system here, which uh, I created, is called Human Pac-Man. And it was a system where uh, you could walk through the city streets and you'd be the Pac-Man collecting the cookies and by walking through them and your friends are chasing you, the ghosts. And we'll show you a quick video of this now. A wearable computer with a head mount display and various sensors which we have, which is sensing my uh, body's position and as well as the head orientation. So we know exactly where I am and what I'm looking at. So when we do this, we can then augment the real world which I'm in now with the virtual world. So this Pac-Man world, I'm seeing it as part of the real world. I can see cookies in front of me and I'm walking through them as if I'm the human Pac-Man. So what about sound? Sound is probably something that we think, okay, this, this is a bit old, right? And in fact, sound is the first kind of augmented reality we, we had. If you think about it, before the Walkman, we didn't have a way that we could have personalised sound wherever we go. So sound is something we all experience as augmented reality. But even now, we can make very interesting experience communication interactively using sound. And I want to show you the work of one of our former students at Keio University in Tokyo. And he changed a, an, an everyday object, umbrella, into something interactive and enjoyable experience using sound. And we'll show the video now. sound, you can turn your everyday umbrella into a samurai sword. And what about touch? Can we communicate by touch with the internet? This is something which I've been very interested in and working on for a few years. And a few years ago, I wanted to make a touch communication system, and I made a system for humans and pet at first. Because with pets, you still can't call up your pet through the telephone when you're away from the home, because we can't talk to animals with language, but I hope, I hope we do, can in the future. And with this system here, you could pet the uh, physical avatar when you're at the office or at school, and then your pet at home will feel the uh, hugging sensation in the same place on their body. And then I extended this, I wanted to extend this to human-to-human -to -human communication. 
So with this system here, it's a hugging pyjama, and the parent who could be busy and away from the home at work or on a business trip, uh, they can not only talk or maybe Skype with their kids, but also hug with each other, which is a much more emotional and rich sense of presence. And I'll show you a quick video of this now. Virtual hug via the internet. And then you can see that this hugging pajama is connected to the internet, produces the hug in the same spot. We can both wear such jackets and then interactively we can have a hugging and caressing together right. through the internet. And uh, now we're working on a small and mobile uh, version of this and it's uh, called Ring You. And it's a ring that you can squeeze your ring and then your partner or friend will feel squeeze on their finger. So you can interactively hug through your rings and you can also change the colour of your partner's ring to convey your mood while you're sending them a silent squeeze. And uh, so kissing is something which <laughs> would be very unnatural to do with your iPhone because kissing glass just doesn't feel the same. So I think it's a very a big advantage to have haptic devices uh, for kiss communication. And so we'll so show the video of this here. Uh, so this, this device uh, is a kiss messenger and it's a small, uh, small robotic device for transmitting kiss. So you could be away from your loved one and uh, not only can you chat to each other, uh, but you can also uh, send the kiss with, the, with this device. It measures, the, it measures the pressure from your lips and it sends us the pressure in a bi-directional control manner to your partner so, they, so you both feel each other's pressure and your kiss. So smell and taste is uh, are, are two modes of interaction that we rarely see with computers and this is because unlike audio vision they're very difficult to digitize. But I believe smell and taste is very important to communicate through the internet. And the reason is because uh, it's the smell and taste are directly connected to the emotion and memory system of your brain. And so it is scientifically true that uh, you can have subconscious eff effect on emotion and memory with taste and smell. But the current technologies are very difficult because they're chemical based and uh, analog, it's a bit like music was before the CD. So it's difficult to transmit with internet or scale to large networks. But in the 60s, uh, there was this early invention which was called Sensorama, and it was a, uh, a device for 3D motion picture, but it also had the smell of, uh, the, smell of the movie. So uh, it was, a, I think, the first interactive sense system. Uh, one of my PhD students has been working on the system called Sound Perfume, where when you meet someone, it detects what is their favorite scent through the social networks and then sends that favorite scent to them to improve their mood when you're talking together. And we've been working with a, uh, a company in Japan called Chatperf and we're developing applications. And I believe it's the first mobile device that you can send a smell message. So I'll try to give a quick demo here. You can see the <laughs> puff coming out. So you can send someone a message and or a Facebook message and not only do they receive the message but they get the smell as well. But as I mentioned, uh, chemical based solutions are difficult to, to, to connect to networks and internet. So what I'm interested in now is to make electrical and magnetic stimulation of taste and smell uh, so that it, it can be fully digitized. And we've made a uh, taste communication device, which we're going to play the video here. And the idea is that uh, in the future, uh, through your computer, someone can send you a, a taste message like this. Okay. But the, the, this is the future. In reality, we've started to make prototypes, which uh, can, you put on your tongue. And what it does is it uh, puts an electrical signal, uh, as well as a, a thermal signal, uh, on your tongue. And then it causes... Uh, causes your uh, brain to have uh, taste perception. So I'd like to call for a volunteer. Who would like to try this electric taste unit? <laughs> Anyone? Seriously? Yes, please, please. So 
so what he's going to do, he's going to put this device on his tongue. Can you, can you see? It's secure? Yes, it won't kill you, don't worry. Um, and then put your tongue in between these two metal plates. And they've also been disinfected, so don't worry, it's, it's clean. <laughs> Just put your tongue inside there, yeah. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a lemony sour taste. Can you taste it? Yeah. 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 Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you very much. It, it works. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So he was brave. Uh, so in the future, I also uh, hope that we can generate smell uh, through uh, non-chemical ways. And what I'm, what I'm proposing and working on uh, with uh, another professor who's from medical school, is this anatomy, uh, is to make uh, magnetic coils that you can put on the outside of your tongue, which will stimulate the olfactory bulb. But I don't have any demo here because this is still very early work. But I hope in the future, uh, scientists can, can actually generate this new kind of communication. So in summary, I'd like to uh, say, take home message is, the future of the internet, please think beyond audiovisual. We can express our humanity using all the five senses. Thank you very much. Thank you.